Well, when I first wrote it, it was very, very different from what it is now. Uh, so I, I wrote it kind of freely without thinking it had to be performed or published or anything. I just wanted to see, first of all, if I could capture my dad's voice. He had a very idiosyncratic way of speaking. And I was describing it to someone and I, and I just thought I would try and write it down. So I just wrote a scene with my dad in it. Uh, and we always watched television at home all the time, so I had lots of scenes of the family watching terrible television. That's not in it anymore, you know, so lots of stuff has gone. As I became more and more serious about making it into a real play rather than just a thing for myself. Uh, yeah, so I think I found, it, I found it enjoyable to write it first, but as I say, I wasn't writing it under any pressure. It's a couple of weeks in the life of this family and it starts with the younger son coming back from the seminary where he's been training to be a missionary priest. Uh, he's not telling the full truth about why he's home. He says he's just, they, they've just been let off on their holidays a little bit early. Uh, and the older brother and the sister in the family have got themselves into a real financial difficulty, secret financial difficulty, that they have to resolve this weekend. Uh, and the, so the kind of tragedy of the play comes from the attempt to resolve this financial crisis, the failed attempt to resolve it and the, the fallout of that. I say tragedy because it's a uh, Something really bad happens in it, but it's a comedy. So I think of it as a tragedy uh, populated by very funny people. You know, I went to a seminary. Uh, the circumstances of the family are similar to mine, although I had more uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, but the events of the play are mostly fictional. I think actors are, are well, it's supposed to be true that actors are very good at dialogue. I think that probably is true, you know, because you know the, the lines that you can say and the lines that you can't and you come across a lot of lines that you really find hard to say, particularly when you're working in television. Uh, so of course every line is run through my head for, for sayability, you know. I'm not saying, some of the lines in my play I think are quite difficult to say, but they, they might be right on the edge of what can believably be said by someone spontaneously. Uh, but I hope they, they're this side of the line. Uh, so I think being an actor helps with the dialogue. I, I don't think it helped with the story. I really had to develop that. Uh, that was a kind of new skill I had to develop. Uh, with the plotting. But I, yeah, I'm sure it does help a bit. Yeah, I mean, I've made quite a lot of cuts in it, and John's made other cuts that I've agreed to, and a couple of cuts that, I, that I've wanted put back in. Uh, and I, I, I actually enjoy that part of the process, that kind of the making of it together. You know, you don't. I, I mean, unless you're Alan Akeborn or something, or Tom Stoppard, you don't arrive at rehearsals with a new play that's complete. Uh, once you hear people speaking, and, and uh, once you watch the scenes in order and the cumulative effect of the scenes, you think, actually, we don't need that. That's slowing things up. That doesn't really make sense there. Uh, that's a hangover from a previous draft. You know, there's lots of things that when you hear the actors uh, you know, giving it life, you think, oh, I don't need that anymore. Look at, just look at the look on his face. He doesn't have to say that, you know. He just has to stare at somebody rather than uh, talk to them. You know, th things like that you can, so, so it's been a real learning experience, which I, I always hoped it would be.